why wearable computers now? What is it that allows us to actually make this technology now as opposed to 5, 10, or 15 years ago? And so what we're showing here is the basic uh, constraints that have been part of what we've been designing for the past 20 years. Today, you have to do more gross gestures, things like you know, moving your finger across a touch screen, or using speech for input when you're mobile as opposed to something that takes too much visual manual attention. So we show cording keyboards, so we show embroidery, we show textiles, uh, we show ring scanners, all different ways of doing input on a mobile device it doesn't take so much visual manual attention. From there we go to different types of displays, different types of applications. We go from VR helmets in the 80s and 90s and show how they're trying to immerse you in a synthetic reality. They take all your attention away from the real world and put it in the virtual. To wearable computers today, which try to actually augment your world, use the minimum amount of attention for the maximum interface. So what this exhibit does a really nice job of showing is how power production, how power use has changed, what's happened with the head-mounted displays, with input devices that have allowed us the, you know, the tools to draw from to really build a device that you could comfortably wear all day. It's a really exciting time here at Georgia Tech for wearables. We're starting a wearable computing center. So the online exhibition is actually housed at the Wearable Computing Center website. We're hoping that the online exhibition will be able to help educate even high school students that are excited about this. I see people come down here who are working on accessibility or have particular problems. They suddenly see how glass and wearable computers in general can help out with their particular problems and that's really a great feeling. Thank you.